Hey guys, welcome back. This is John. Uh, I am in the process of doing another system review. It's taking me a little bit longer to do some research and edit and film it, all that good stuff. So in the meantime, I'm going to do this really quick video. Uh, it's over the Tapwave Zodiac 2. Now, I, yes, I did do a review on this way back in the day on this channel, but it was one of my earlier videos. I didn't really mention uh, as much as I would have liked, and I figured there's you guys, a lot of you guys may not have seen that video, and it's always good to do like, kind of a follow-up video to some of these reviews as well to kind of teach you guys more and kind of, you know, introduce you guys to kind of very unique and underrated handheld that came out in 2003. This is called the Tapwave Zodiac 2. Now, this is the Model 2 version. There was a Model 1 as well, which is a little bit bigger, uh, but both versions are, are fairly rare. Came out by a company called Tapwave back in 2003 by some executives who worked for Palm. Uh, remember back in the day when Palm Pilots were the huge rage? This is before smartphones, all that good stuff. It does run off the Palm OS operating system, so a lot of the games that work on Palm OS 5 will work on, on this thing. Um, this, this is the case, comes with you know, a nice little case. Now the main purpose of the thing is more of an organize, organizer, okay? So you, could use, you can sync up to your computer, you can you know use a calculator, you can have a calendar on here, uh, all that good stuff. That's the main purpose of this, but it does work as a gaming system too. Uh, this is a flap that opens up. Let's take this now. This thing does run off of SD cards. These are where the games and programs look like, just like standard SD cards. Uh, now, they are working on emulators for this thing as well. I've heard they're actually working on a, a, a PlayStation 1 emulator, which will be really cool when that comes out. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to chop this um, case right here real quick, and this is what the handheld looks like. This is a really cool design. Let's get the flap out of here. Uh, this is the power button here. This is your your analog control stick. Actually very responsive. And you can actually push down on it as well. It's a button too. You can hear that but but push down. Uh, this is your start. Uh, this is your home button. This is your KB, XY. Uh, and then here it's kind of hard to camouflage but these are actually bumper buttons too. It does run off of uh, Bluetooth technology, so it's it's pretty early uh, technology back in the day in 2003. And these are where the games and programs would would slide into. You can fit two at a time. I got Duke Nukem, and I've got uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 on here, I believe. Okay. And let's check let's check out the mains power this thing on. The only thing bad about the system is the battery life. It is a lithium battery, so it does uh, you can recharge it and stuff, but it only lasts about three hours if you're actually playing with it. If you're listening to music and the screen's off, it'll last up to six hours. So, you know, compared to what, you know, phones and other technology today lasts, it's, it's not that great, okay? Here's the main menu, and you can control two ways. It's actually a touch screen. This is the the stick you can, uh, you know, stylus you can plug right here in the back. But uh, it is touch screen. Or you can go, you can use your 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 analog stick here. So, go to My Stuff, Clock. Let's, uh, let's go do uh, Home. I don't think the auto, no music, let's go to uh, turn on the song. Yes, unmute it, okay. Now it's unmuted, okay, you can go organizer, get your address, address book, you can uh, memo pad, date book, you can write, you know, to-do list, stuff like that. Uh, let's go back to media. You can watch movies, you can listen to music on this thing. You know, I don't know how many gigs this thing is, to be quite honest with you, it's, it's not that much. <laughs> Maybe a few. I really don't know. I, I need to look that up, or maybe if you guys know, let me know. But it doesn't take photos, uh, but uh, you can store photos on it. So you can sync it up through a, through a USB a connection there, and you can hook it up to your computer and sync up photos. So you can look at photos. Here's some examples of the quality. It's not not too bad. That's not my dog. That's just actually programmed into the the system. <laughs> Pre-programmed there. Let's go back. Uh, games. It's built into Solitaire. It's built into here. But let's check out, I know you guys want to probably see one of the games here. Let's check out Pro Tony Hawk first. So thing you need to pop in. Thing. Let's screen is huge. I like the size of the screen. It's very nice. So, <laughs> this is Tony Hawk. Not bad, it's a pretty fun fun game. You know, fun to mess around with. But, 
Let's go back to the main menu. Yeah, let's just exit. And I'm gonna show you uh, probably one of my favorite games on this thing, Duke Nukem 3D, which I'm really looking forward to the new Duke Nukem coming out. That'd be awesome. Let's menu, let's click on this thing. Come get some. <laughs> Love the one-liners and thing, it's a classic. The new. Eh. It's too medium, I'm gonna get my ass kicked because this is a really hard version. Come get some. So, left, right, you can go like this. Change your weapon. Come on, come on. Damn. Pretty challenging. <laughs> now this is kind of a shorter version of the Duke Nukem game. It's not the full version that you, you'd see in the PC or, or Saturn or PlayStation 1. But the graphics run very smooth. This should be a card. Okay, let's check out uh, some other games on here. Next game we're going to check out is Spy Hunter This is the Midway Arcade Classic. Let's check it out. Hit your firing button too. Pretty fun game overall. Damn. Definitely upgrade the graphics from the arcade. Object is to uh, avoid your enemies and finish your course, obviously. Let's see. Here. Sound isn't too bad on this unit. You know, the reason I think this system didn't really last very long is because PSP was just about coming out. Uh, you know, you had the Nintendo was pretty strong on the market as well, so it really just didn't have a chance, and this was listed, uh, I don't know how much it sold for necessarily when it was on retail, but it wasn't cheap, and it was really marketed towards people who were 18 to 36 year olds, and I think most guys at work uh, who had Palm Pilots probably weren't looking to play many games on it, unfortunately. So let's go back, see if there's any more games I want to show you. Top Wave Zodiac uh, Adventure Pack, the last thing I'm going to show you here. Let's check it out. Pretty cool graphics, I see. I love the music here. Let's set up a few targets for you up ahead. Let's see what you can do. Yes. Oh, this thing does have a uh, vibrate in me as well. So, uh, it does vibrate. <laughs> so, when you get hit, it does have a rubble pack. Nice. Nice. Destroy your targets. So, pretty cool. Kind of a cool space shooter game, for sure. Kind of reminds me of like Wing Commander, so to speak. Awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Uh, we'll have another review up here shortly. And have a great day. Take care. See you. Bye.